Hello and welcome. You're now looking at Dropbox.com and we're here because it's a place where you can deliver files from if you're going to be delivering content to your customers inside of your membership. You can use other cloud-based sites like Google Drive and you can use sites like Mediafire that are paid applications. In many cases, you can use a site like Amazon S3 which allows you to deliver files without worry of going over bandwidth limits. Every time that someone accesses your content, this access is placed against your bandwidth usage and then you are charged by Amazon S3 for use of that bandwidth. And you can also purchase paid access to Google Drive by using Google Workspace, which gives you more access to be able to deliver your downloads and increases your bandwidth limits. Now, in most cases, what you're going to do is be given a link by the CloudBee service. You're going to get the link as we're showing you here in Dropbox. And this is the link that you will then hyperlink inside of your membership for any content that your customer is going to download. One of the things you'll be aware of inside of Dropbox in particular, you'll notice here that there is a DL equals zero. If you want the file to be downloaded directly, you're going to make this DL equals then the number one. Now, regardless of your page protection, when the customer hovers over this link, you'll see down here at the bottom left that in general, their browser is going to show them exactly where that link is. It does make the link shareable. And in most cases, you won't worry about this, but it's possible that you may want to protect the location of that link to make it not shareable. And you will need to take additional steps in order to do that. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, if you're going to deliver your files from the same location where your domain is going to be hosted for your membership, you can protect the folders where those files are going to be stored in addition to those individual files. For example, if you're going to use membership platform a member and you're going to host your files in the same domain, you can protect your files. If you're using something like a free membership plugin, such as S2 member, again, you can protect your files and the folder where those files are going to be located. You can also protect files and folders within wishlist member if you're going to be delivering your files again from the same domain where your wishlist member membership is going to be hosted. When you're looking at wishlist member and one of the things you'll notice is that for file protection to work you will have needed to upload the files through a WordPress media uploader and that's a specific way of being able to upload a file and then if you've done that then you can undertake the file protection using the methods that they give you in their help tools. And so an important search to undertake is going to be to use your platform, then the words file protection, so you can determine if there's a search result within the FAQ or within their instructions that will tell you how to protect individual files or individual folders that contain the files you're gonna be delivering to your customers. And what you want to be aware of is that each individual platform has its own form of content protection or in some cases, the platform does not have content protection in and of itself. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. We are now inside of Thrivecard.com, and we're here because it's one of the ways that you are going to be able to collect names and email addresses of the individuals that are purchasing your membership. Now, you are going to want to do this regardless of which shopping cart you're going to be using, whether you use the shopping cart of an affiliate network or you use your own shopping cart such as Thrivecart. What you'll see within Thrivecart is there's an area where you can integrate autoresponders to your shopping cart. Once you've integrated your autoresponder with your shopping cart, that means then that the autoresponder will be available inside of any product in your sales process. So for example, if you were using Thrivecart for your sales process, you would make sure that at the point of purchase, which in Thrivecart is the behavior area, that you'd be able to add a process, which Thrivecart calls a rule, where when the product is purchased, the individual is going to be added to a specific autoresponder list that you have integrated with your shopping cart. Now, depending on which membership platform you use, you can also capture a name and email address when an individual signs up for your membership site or is signed up for your membership site. For example, right now we are in site of wishlist member and this is a WordPress based membership platform. 
And basically what we would do is to make sure that our email service provider is going to be connected to our membership platform. That means then that when an individual is signed up for a specific product, or in this case in wishlist member, it would be a level, we want to have that individual automatically added to an email marketing list that we've integrated with our membership platform. Now inside of wishlist member, this would mean then that you would configure each individual list to the autoresponder that you want. So for example, we can go to a specific product, we can then choose a specific list, and because we are working within the MailChimp integration, we know that this individual will be added to this individual list. We can determine that if an individual is removed from this level in wishlist member, we can then have that individual removed from the email marketing list. Now these options fail, what we can do is to place an opt-in box inside of our member area on the page where the individual is going to be when they are using the product. In this case, you'll notice that our autoresponder is integrated already. That means we can choose a specific list and when the individual chooses to place their name and email address in, they're going to be added to the list that we specify. And this is something that you can do inside of any page that you create for your membership. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, if you are delivering streaming video inside of your membership, you are going to need a video host. And a default host for creators, in some cases, tends to be YouTube. One of the things about YouTube is that you will have ads playing on the actual video. And this may not be a good experience for your users inside of your membership. There are other choices. There are sites like Vimeo, which allow you to make payment to the company in order to stream and embed your videos inside of the pages where your membership is. Typically what this is going to involve is you uploading the video to the platform that you are using. Once you have the video going inside of the platform, what Vimeo then will do is to optimize the video. Inside of most video hosts, you are going to be able to customize a video by adding a thumbnail. So if you have a custom thumbnail for your course inside of your membership, you can update that video by adding the thumbnail to the file. And while you cannot fully protect the actual video, one of the things you can do is you can make it so that the video can't be embedded in other places. Now this is a feature inside of Vimeo. It's also a feature inside of other video content hosts. So what we can do here is we can specify that the video can only be embedded on one domain. We can also make it so that the video is going to be hidden from the video sharing site Vimeo where the video is going to be hosted. You will have control over elements such as the play bar and the video, but again, each video host is going to have different elements that you can customize inside of the embed code. You'll typically see some kind of share feature or you'll see an area for you to click in embed code. You're going to copy the embed code. Now, assuming that you're adding the video to a protected page, what you're going to do is you're going to find an area for your HTML code. You're going to place your code inside of that area. You're then going to save or publish your page with the new code. And then your video is then going to be available on your protected page for your customers to view. Now there are back doors into individuals who will be willing to look at the code and to figure out how to download your video. However, in most cases, this video will only be accessible to the individuals that go to your page and they will not be able to share this video outside of your site. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. When you choose to use a course platform like Think Epic or Teachable, what you're choosing is a way of being able to protect your pages as well as your content without having to add an extra step to provide security for that content. What you're also doing when you choose to use a course platform is you don't need to have a video host like Vimeo or YouTube in order to embed your videos. Typically, you can upload your videos directly to the course platform just as we are doing inside of teachable.com. So when you are hosting and uploading your video to a course platform, you can add a thumbnail as you can see here with this particular video inside of the course platform Teachable. And even if someone who is not a customer knows where this page is, you will not be able to access it because the page is automatically protected. So if we were to place the URL to the page 
into a private browser and we were to click that area, what you'll see here is that the individual would come to this particular page and see that they would not be able to enter. Now, every particular course platform is going to be different in how they execute this, but the principle is the same. If someone comes to the page and they have not paid for access, the course platform will lock them out until they log in with their proper credentials. If they don't have credentials, they won't be able to enter the course and view your content. So you are protecting your pages as well as your content by having it within a course platform. There's typically a cost associated with a course platform. In some cases, you'll have a free version that will allow you to try limited features of the course platform. But if you want to sell the course, you're typically going to need at least one of the paid plans. And what that paid plan will give you is to give your customers a password protected area, a place to host your video content and have it protected, as well as a place to protect your downloaded content. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video.